In this tutorial in CyberLink PowerDirector, we're going to show you how to use anchor points with graphic images and with titles. Please look at the following example and then we'll show you how to use this technique yourself. I have my video of a baseball scene on track number one. Now I'm going to take my image of the baseball, the PNG file, and bounce it on the screen by dragging it down to track number two. I can edit it, which I need to do. I can go to the pip editor by double clicking or pressing the F2 function key. And now I have my baseball. I need to make it smaller, so we'll start by resizing it. And then we're also going to do some other things with it. I need to do some keyframing. So I have to make sure that my keyframe controls are visible. You can click on the little blue arrow in the lower right corner to turn them on or off. I'm going to take the baseball and drag it and put it just outside the visible screen to start with. Now what I'd like to do is set some keyframes. So with my cursor on the left side, my playhead, I'll set a position and scale and rotation and anchor point keyframe. I'm going to start out by working with my anchor points. So I'm going to drag down on my object settings on the left side. And here is my anchor point. You notice the default is 0.5 and 0.5, which means it's the center of the object. I'm going to turn display anchor point on. I don't have to to do this, but I prefer to move the anchor point with the mouse. So this will help. I'll click that on. And now I have the little green push pin at the center of my object. I want to change the location of that. It will lock into any of the areas where you see the little white circles. So I'll take and drag it down to the lower right corner and it will snap there. So now I have my controls of these particular keyframes at my first frame. So now I'm going to move over about a second. I'll just click on the time code, type in the number one, press enter, and that moved me over a second. We'll enlarge it so you can see a little bit better. And now what I'm going to do is at that point set all the same controls. I don't have to mess with scale right now but I'll do the other three. Position, rotation, and anchor point. Now what I'd like to do is change the rotation value one second in. So all I need to do is drag the circle around the anchor point. I'm going to click on the zoom out so you can see that indeed we do have a circle here that we can drag on. So I'm going to take and drag it and turn it like this. And so I now have my anchor point in that corner and it's spun around that corner. Now what I want to do is move forward just a little bit. I'm going to enlarge this and move over just a frame. Now I'm going to set the three values that I'm working on so that it's stable for that time. Now what I want to do is change not the rotation, but the anchor point. So I'm going to take my little push pin and drag it to the right. Now you have to be careful because if you hold the mouse incorrectly, you'll see that you will have a little blue square. We're not going to change the, the freeform look of this. So you have to make sure the anchor point's visible. And I'll take and drag it over and put it on the lower right. We're going to rotate it again. So now I'm going to go a second further. I'll type in the number 2 in my time code. Press enter. Now I'm a second over. So what I want to do now that I'm over a second is I want to rotate it more. So I'm going to use the same position, rotation, and anchor point values. Keep them the same. And when I rotate it, it will change the rotation value. And in this point, I think I'm also going to set a scale value. So the scale hasn't changed from the beginning. Now I'm going to go in three seconds and I'm going to actually use the scale value on the left side in the properties. We'll enlarge it and I'll also move it to the upper right and click on OK. 
Now let's see what it looks like when we play this. Okay, that worked out pretty good. Let me show you exactly what's happening. We're going to double click back on the image. And now watch happen. what happens as I scroll through. You see it rotates around that anchor point in the lower right corner. And then it settles at 90 degrees. And then you notice between the, those two keyframes, the anchor point switches from the lower left to the lower right. And then it rotates a second time, locks in there, and then it simply enlarges. So that's a little bit about using anchor points with graphic images. We'll click on Cancel since we like that. I've switched to my title room. I'm going to take the default My Title and drag that onto track number three in the default stacking order. Then we'll get into the Title Designer. What I'm going to do to make it simple is simply use a character preset in this case. And so we'll take this one and make this the title. We'll call this Summer Ball and we'll change the size from 48 to 26. And now we're going to do some keyframing of this title. So we'll turn off the uh, character preset sub subset on the left side. And let's see how we can use anchor points with a title. So if I drag down to the bottom, I can either have my anchor point again displayed or invisible. We're, we've got it turned on in this case. I'm going to turn on my zoom out a bit and we'll take our summer ball title and we'll start off the screen. And I'm going to take the anchor point, put the anchor point, drag it to the lower right corner of the title. And now with my playhead at the, at the start, we'll use the position value and the rotation value. We're not going to have to change the anchor point in this case. But I'm going to start it angled up like this. And then I'll move over, let's say, oh, two seconds, press enter. And then at the two second mark, I'm going to have the title be down. And I'm also going to have it rotated so it's flat. I think I'll move it to the lower left corner. Okay, and now if we watch this, it will start off the screen, slowly rotate around that corner, and land in the bottom. Let's take another title. I'm going to minimize that, click on my T, and we'll just add another title. We'll just say Join Now. And let's go back to our character presets, use something simple here. We'll put it on top of the ball. And we'll have it come in a bit later. So we'll start it later. Once the summer ball is in, that's when the join now will pop up over the enlarged baseball. I'll click on OK. Now if we go back to the beginning, we're going to see the impact of the anchor point on both the graphic object and the title. Let's play and see what we have. We have the title coming in, angling down, rotating around the lower right corner. We have the baseball bouncing twice and then enlarging as we rotate it around two different anchor points in CyberLink PowerDirector. So this gives you some of the basics on how you can use this tool in PowerDirector.